，好，这。Tomorrow is Labor Day, and this weekend is Labor Day, and.、Uh, Definition of Labor Day is the annual celebration of social and economic achievement of American workers. I'd like to say that we are the labor of life, and that we enhance the quality of life of individuals. A couple of quotes, right quick. One is by Maya Angelou: "Nothing will work unless you do." By Maya Angelou. The second one is the best preparation for. Good work to Mars to do good work today, Albert Hubbard. Back to you, Steve. Bravo! Thank you, Melvin. That was awesome. Nothing will work unless you do, and that's what we're all here doing tonight. Working together, teamwork makes the dream work. Lee Perry, your host for the evening, and、uh, pinch hitting for co-host is Matt Miller tonight. He'll be helping me out. Danny's feeling a little bit under the weather. It is my really honor and privilege to turn it over to one of the best story facilitators in the business, Miss Net Zobar. Thank you, Lee. That's very kind of you. And also Melvin for your amazing message, and Steve for all that music. What a great start to the Zoom. As Lee says, it is story time. And my name's Net Zobar. Gulfport, Mississippi, and my background's QuickBooks Consulting. Now, if you're new to this call or to our team, you might be wondering why do we do this? Why are stories important? Well, stories are how we share the incredible impact Legal Shield has on the lives of not only our members but our associates. The stories motivate us, and they help us make connections with people. And they're really important until you have stories of your own, because you can borrow these stories you're about to hear. I borrow stories all the time. So when you listen to the story, take notes about what it's about, how they tell it, the person's background, location. So you can borrow that story or bring them in on a three-way call if it's appropriate for you to help make a connection. So our first story, we are heading to Michigan to hear from Penny Manning. Penny, you're on. Hi, this is Penny Manning, and I am in Trenton, Michigan. My background is a small business owner, and I had canceled、uh, my internet account and had a zero balance. Out of nowhere, I get a bill for twenty-five dollars, and no matter how often I called, I couldn't get anybody to tell me why, what it was for. So I didn't pay it. Well, they sent it to collections. I <laughs> collections couldn't tell me why I owed it either. So I called Powers Chapman here in Michigan. Explained to them that nobody could tell me why I owed this money. They sent over a two-page letter requesting so much stuff from my account that、uh, I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, I don't know where I'm going. Anyway, they sent the letter. I haven't heard anything. It's been about three and a half months now, so I think they did a job well done. Back to you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Penny. I love that story because that's a story that we can tell. And just about everybody can relate to that crazy story,、um, because stuff like that happens to us all the time. And it's a good story to remember to tell a prospect. And it also shows how our law firm took a twenty-five dollar charge very, very seriously. So thank you so much, Penny, for sharing that story with us. We're going to now go back to Indiana and hear from Lee Perry. Lee, it's yours. So excited to share this story, Annette, because the attorneys couldn't do anything legally.、Uh, my client,、um, who actually bought the membership for a retirement situation,、um, remembered that they could call for anything. They found a truck that they wanted in the diesel model at、uh, a nearby dealership outside of town, about an hour from here. Went to the local dealership and said, "Can we get this truck from you?" They bought an Airstream and they wanted to pull it with this vehicle, and they said, "Sure, not a problem. We've got a great relationship." When he went back the next day, they said, "We're so sorry. They sold that vehicle to someone else, but we have the gasoline version." 
he was really disappointed. He signed, he bought the truck, he went home. The next day, she noticed that he was really upset, stomping around the house and finally sat him down and said, what happened? He said, I don't want the gas version. I want the diesel version. So they got the contracts out, laid it out, looked through the whole thing and said, I don't think there's anything we can do. They called Legal Shield. The attorney said, the attorney also happens to be a West Point graduate. My client was a former sergeant major for the entire Marine Corps. So he said, is it true that you're the sergeant major? And he said, yes. He said, well, sir, I think what you need to do is put on your sergeant major pants, go back to that dealership and gave him the exact language to use about how unhappy he was and how he felt like he'd been bait and switched and uh, give him what for. And that's exactly what my client did, went into the dealership and told him they ripped up that contract. He went to the town outside of here and picked up the diesel version. So even when our attorneys can't do something legally, they can help provide advice to get our clients what they want. Back to you, Annette. Thank you so much, Lee. That's another really great story because, you know, there are attorneys out there who would have taken that situation and said, well, for so much money, we can sue them. And they would have let that go on for forever, trying to sue them to, to get the situation resolved. Instead, our attorney used some good old common sense. So that is awesome. So thank you, ladies, for those two really great stories. And, you know, stories are really important. Um, so when you have one, whether it's an opportunity story or a membership story, it's always a great idea uh, to share it with the team so others of us can use it. So it's now time for What's My Line? And I have the honor of turning this over to a great guy, Mr. Matt Miller, who will be interviewing an associate. So who's it gonna be? Mr. Matt Miller, you're on, tell us who it is. All right, well, thank you so much, Ms. Annette Zohar. Well, the, the lucky guest tonight is the one, the only Prince Johnson. And before we get to the interview, just wanna thank everybody for showing up tonight. I mean, it's Labor Day weekend, and what, this is one of those things that's easy to show up for, easy not to show up for, but y'all decided to show up, and we all know, as Coach Shredden tells us, success begins with showing up. So kudos to everybody for hopping on this call. So let's get to it. Super excited to interview Prince Johnson here. Uh, so, so Prince, I, I have a, I have a five-minute limit here. I'm going to start the timer because I know we could go on for days here on, on this stuff. Uh, but let, let's get things going here. Uh, so, how did you originally hear about Legal Shield, Prince? It goes back to about 1990, 1996, uh, to be quite honest. It was during a time in which I was, um, I guess you might say, there was a child support issue that involved not only here, uh, the state of Ohio, but it also involved another state. Um, and according to my calculations, I really did not owe that kind of money. And I wondered where those figures actually came from. So my first um, inclination was to uh, just go through the court system to see exactly what this was really all about. And I was warned that before going to court, I should prepare an answer in which I'm glad that I did. So I did a contact, that's when I became a member of Legal Shield the very first time. And I happened to have gotten an attorney that took my case and it started this entire process that went from 1996 up until uh, February of 1999. Wow, okay, great. So we've already heard some, some stories, some membership stories tonight that were kind of maybe on like the trivial side of things, but then even something almost on the traumatic side of things that Prince just talked about, you know, our, our membership covers everything in between. So that's the great Prince. So uh, that's on the membership side of things. So so let's, let's shift gears to the associate side of things. So what what is what was your original why and if it has changed since then, what is it now? So start with what was the original why? The original, the original why was the fact that I knew that I needed some other type of, um, of income, not only that, but the legal aspect of what this company was really doing had really interested me, especially after I had a case myself. And I knew that with that, I would be able to help other people. I could be ethical. Um, I would give them facts, and I would also have documents to prove exactly what my experience had been. There we go. That's good stuff. So what, what keeps you motivated, especially throughout you know, this last kind of 
you know, almost two years now. Uh, Prince, what keeps you going with your business? What really keeps me going is personally, I've been involved with um, the VA. Uh, I, had a health, I had a health issue um, that I could not get resolved through, um, through the VA. And so that was my only alternative was to use legal shield in which I would always get good advice in which I still am getting today. Okay, and so you talked about the VA. Um, obviously, a lot of us know that you're a former veteran. Uh, so do you have just kind of like a soft spot in your heart for veterans as well to help them with, uh, with, with legal issues and getting them to membership? Is that something you really focus on, Prince? Yes, I have a huge heart for veterans. Um, as a matter of fact, um, I am meeting more veterans now than I had been for those that I was really reaching out to that did not respond, I'm finding out now that when I do connect with them, they have needs that are not being resolved. So therefore this is a means of getting those, those matters uh, resolved legally and permanently. There we go. So, so exactly how many years have you been an associate with Legal Shield, Prince? 2010 was my second go around. I, the, sec, the first time was in 1996. Um, I became an associate. I disconnected from that organization for ethical reasons and um, got back involved again in 2010. Okay, so if we could go back to that Prince Johnson in 96, uh, what's one thing that the Prince Johnson of today would tell that Prince Johnson of 96? <laughs> Keep doing exactly what you're doing. A lot of times what really happens when it comes to uh, legal issues we tend to bypass the fact that we can actually resolve this, ma these matters ourselves. Um, I would not do anything uh, any different. I would probably be a bit more persistent and contacting or staying in contact with my legal firm uh, at least twice a month and knowing that I can ask just about any question in which I do. Um, it's, just, uh, it's just a matter of, of not having any stress any strain or any struggle. There we go. We got, we have 30 seconds left, Prince. So uh, tell me what you're currently reading. I'm currently reading <clears throat> The Quest for Purpose by Ken Keyes. Okay. And let's go back to that Prince of 96. If there's one book that you wish you would have read back in 96 that you've already read now, what book would that be? How to Win Friends and Influence People. There we go. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's Prince Johnson. We are right down at the five-minute mark. We've got three seconds left. So, Prince, it's been a pleasure interviewing you, sir. Thank you so much. And I'm going to kick it back to Miss Lee Perry. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Matt. And, Prince, thanks for such a great interview. And you guys, I love the way you set me up for this, Matt. Folks, you know, the first week of the month, we get our heads set. We talk about personal development. Before I go out, to our favorite millionaire club, well, we've got two of our favorite millionaire club members on, Tim Halligan and John Drennan. I'm gonna go out to John Drennan in a minute. I would love for each of you to put, um, I know most of you are working on multiple personal development books, but if you would please type in the chat what personal development book that is most impacting you right now into the chat that will get a great list going and you can save the chat so you'll have your new reading list. Okay. Oh, Lisa said nine little words. Perfect. I know that's one of Timmer's favorites. Oh, I also have You Are a Badass. That's my current one too. No excuses, Brian Tracy, the Dow. Well, that's perfect, Robert. Everybody keep filling them in. And Robert, I'll take that as my sign. It's time to, to pitch this ball over to John Drennan. And Mr. Drennan is going to do uh, a segment on the Dow right now. Mr. Drennan? Well, surprise, surprise. I did not know I was doing that. But here's what I'll do is go ahead. And um, I'm seeing some faces here of people that sent me pictures. Well, there's Bobby holding up the Dow. Bobby Walden is the first person who let me know they actually received their copy from Amazon. I haven't gotten mine yet. And then Brenda Daniels, I believe you got yours, right? You text me. Um, Chris Wilkes sent me a photo of hers. Bill Radford sent me a photo of his, and he's up in Nova Scotia, for God's sakes. I mean, I don't know how Amazon got to him before they got to me. I'm in New Hampshire, or before they got to some of you. Uh, so 
I think what we talked about, Lee, was I know several people have received the book. So I'd like to open it up and just ask. And receiving it doesn't mean you've read it. So have any of you gotten the, the final copy and started reading it and want to make any comments? And comments that maybe something you highlight, but it would be good for the group to hear. Uh, Brenda Daniels, Old Kentucky, background, professional golf and caregiving. Yes, mine came in uh, yesterday late, and I uh, got, I think, 30 pages last night. And it's just so cool, John, because you referenced, like, Coach and Frank Coin, and it just feels cool that, hey, I know those people. Uh, I don't have the book. I've already got my yellow highlight just in those 30 pages. And... And it, it's so refreshing. It's definitely um, anybody, um, any industry can definitely learn from this. So I, I'm excited and I'm, I'm sure I'll have it read within two days. Well, so thanks awesome. for that, Brenda. And, mm -hmm. and by the way, uh, this book is not at all a legal shield book. It's network right. marketing. However, it's clear as I go through my story that I started with Legal Shield a long time ago and I'm still with them. And I give some examples of why that is. So it's a kind of a subtle commercial for Legal Shield inside there. Uh, anyone else? Robert Bagley, Louisville, Kentucky, retired engineer, author and entrepreneur. Um, I love the integrity that's uh, talked about and is displayed through the book. And I especially, um, I'm impressed and working with the personal inventory. So that's a very powerful tool that uh, can be used. Back to you, John. Robert, did you get the book from Amazon or the Kindle or the, the physical book? I, I got the Kindle first uh, when it was free. And then I received the, my two copies on Friday from, wow. from, from Amazon. Okay. <laughs> that's quick. I mean, think about it. You couldn't order it really until Wednesday. Well, I might have let some of you know you could get it Tuesday, but that was that was quick. Um, Bobby, I know you're out there in California, and as far as I know, you were the very first one to get it from Amazon, like what, Friday, right? Or th Thursday night? Um, I ordered it at one minute after midnight on the 1st. <laughs> And I received it um, the afternoon of the second. Holy mackerel. And I've, so gotten, you, th I've it, gotten through um, like um, all the different people, especially I was thinking about this when Brenda said so many people that we know, even through Legal Shield, who did a, um, a forward a little bit on it. And then Eric, where are we? But I like the title of the. I'm not really into the book because I had a real full day today, but I like the title of the first chapter, New Ways of Thinking. Hmm. And I have learned that network marketing definitely is a new way of thinking. I need to think more of those new ways. So <laughs> uh, back to you, John. Um, Bobby mentioned Eric Worre. So those of you that got the free download couple things about that. Um, I had had the actual physical book sent to me as a reader's edition before it was available. And when I read it, I found two mistakes. And also I didn't have my foreword in there, but Eric Worre is now on the cover. It was not the case for the Kindle edition that says on the cover forward by Eric Worre and then inside he does the foreword. And then the two mistakes that I found, literally it was late August, they were able to go in and get those corrected. So um, hopefully there's no more mistakes. Anyhow, um, anyone else that's actually gotten a physical copy? I know Bill Radford got it, but he actually came on last week and, and talked about the book. So thanks, Bill. I don't think Chris Wilkes is with us and I don't know that anyone else has gotten the actual physical copy. So, and then Timmer and Lee, I know you were part of the advanced reader team, but you've made comments as well. So 
Um, with that, um, I do want to do this commercial. Um, this a week from yesterday, Saturday, the 11th, I'll be the guest trainer for the Midwest um, Saturday event. Bridget, you probably have information on that, but it's being hosted by uh, Robin April Hurst. All the information's on the calendar. Just go to Ohio. And I understand what they're doing is having briefings in several markets physically, but then they're going to pull them together on a Zoom for the training. So on the calendar, it says the events from 5 to 8 p.m. I know my training segment is scheduled for 6.30 to 7.30 p.m. as part of that event. I know it's going to be a great event because um, the Hearst do a great job in there. They head up like five different states. So if you want to start thinking ahead to take advantage of that, by all means, do that. Also, just reminders, tomorrow is Labor Day. And we are doing a stretch call. And Lee, I know you're going to say that. But since you lead the call on Monday, I just want to say there's nobody better than Lee Perry to start the week and bring the energy. And I'll be doing the um, Zoom tomorrow at 8 p.m. Someone texted me today and asked, actually, Danny Godin texted and asked, will I be doing it? And I said, yes. She goes, great. We're going to use it to help launch a new associate. So kudos to the Godins. Uh -huh. And that's a great idea for everybody. Use that. You know what? Labor Day is such a perfect time. And Melvin Turner did a great job with what he shared there at the opening that, you know, we're doing really meaningful work here and Labor Day is about labor. So what a great time to have people come on and hear about the kind of work we're doing tomorrow night. So anyhow, Lee, back to you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Drennan. And I wanted to give a shout out to, uh, Jawad on on Annette on uh, Danny's team Annette and I shared the um, Zoom on Friday night. She did the first half, I did the second half, and he had half a dozen of his teammates on there. So they were all brand new and getting started, and so it was a um, it was fun having those those folks on there. Um, I wanted to mention also, John, since we're we're letting folks know what's going on this week, is that. Uh, Tuesday night is the Kentuckiana Experience, and that's at 7.30, um, 6.30 Central, 7.30 Eastern, and I will be the um, presenter on that, too. And then um, I just got a note that Lynn Schuster williams is hopping on the call to do our training tidbit. So, hey, Lee, John, yes? Before we go to that, and I just yeah. made note, and I forgot to say this, um, I want to invite people to the Dow of Network Marketing.com website because you can do two things. One, click and get a free companion document that goes with the book. And secondly, um, you, you can go right to the Facebook group if you want to be inside that group making any comments. Thanks. Back to you. Okay. And, and say that uh, again, John. That, that, uh... The website is the Dow of Network Marketing.com. Okay, Okay, cool. And eventually there will be trainings and other things on that site. So y'all might want to bookmark and just know it's out there. Thanks, Lee. Okay. Appreciate that, John. And um, I always find it helpful to have a companion piece when I'm when I'm reading it. It helps me retain. I don't know about you guys. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is that since we are talking about the stretch call in the morning, Jane put the new number on the Team Ascent Facebook group. She made a post of it. It's also on the calendar. You just have to click on stretch call and then scroll down and the new phone number is there. September 15th is when that new number kicks in, folks. So just be prepared on that. Okay, I was just checking my notes to make sure that we covered everything. Did anybody else have any other... Um, any other announcements that we needed to cover, Bridget? Yeah, I was just going to mention that Rob is going to be our guest speaker on Tuesday night, and, and our briefing starts at 7 o'clock, and that is with the Midwest states, all five of them, and Rob will be doing the opportunity that night. He's an amazing presenter. And that's on the calendar as well, right? Yes, ma'am. Okay, great. Thank you so much.
All right. I am not seeing Lynn on. I thought she was hopping on to do this. Um, let me just text her real quick. Sorry, guys. The best laid plans of mice and men. Man plans and God laughs. There you go. That's right. Well, I appreciate everybody. Okay. I, we, we're having some technical difficulties. I appreciate everybody being on. Let's go ahead and wrap it up. It is a holiday weekend. Um, and let's uh, remember that tomorrow morning we'll have our Monday motivation call. And we have a special um presentation for our motivation moment mr paul McAllister. thank you so much lee um i'm going to be reading so i'm going to turn my camera off so that i'm not like juggling all over the place because i'm on my phone and not my computer um, this uh, this comes from uh brian crothers book building an empire and uh, but it's a uh, it's a quote by Marianne uh, from a book by Marianne Williamson. And um, we've all heard uh, Lynn mention her a number of times, but uh, it's just it's just such a powerful thing. And I, I'm not going to have any comments afterward because <laughs> sometimes I have trouble just making through this um, without crying. But it's really powerful and it's really, really been striking me <clears throat> uh, deep. And so I hope that it it um, strikes some of you deep if you need it and just meets you where you're at and and what you're prepared for to receive at this moment. But uh, here, here it is. Our deepest fear is not that we are inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that most frightens us. We ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? Actually, who are you not to be? You are a child of God. Your playing small does not serve the world. There is nothing enlightened about shrinking so that other people won't feel insecure around you. We are all meant to shine as children do. We were born to make manifest the glory of God that is within us. It's not just in some of us, it's in everyone. And we, we let, as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. As we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Back to you. Thanks so much, Paul. Appreciate that. And Lynn was able to hop on. Lynn, did you have some, some words for us to get us set for the month? Hi, everybody. Um, had a little tech issue, so I'm with you on my iPad instead of my normal computer. Can you hear me okay, Lee? Sure can. Awesome. So um, I wanted to talk just a minute tonight as we start a new month. You know, we set our goals, we look ahead, we get ready for, you know, what we want to see happen in our month. And as we do that, we have lots of vision about what it's gonna look like and feel like and sound like and smell like and taste like to be the person who's hit those goals, right? And to do all of that. And here's what we know, obstacles come along, don't they? And things happen when you're making other plans. And so tonight, I just wanted to say really briefly, what if every obstacle that came up for you in September is something that you can look at like a, a, a milestone. Look at it like a little highway sign that tells you where you are on the highway. Look at it as confirmation that you're on your path, that you're doing the thing, right? Do the thing and you'll have the power. But doing the thing sometimes means there's going to be uh, something that comes up to get in your way. Sometimes the universe says, do you really mean it? here, let me put this obstacle in your path and 
test whether you really mean it or not. So as we start a new month, just remember that the obstacles that come up are just there to remind you that you're on the path. It wouldn't be any fun if it were all the same easiness, right? Just totally happened automatically. Well, there'd be no fun in life, right? If you were playing a soccer game and you showed up to the soccer field and the other team wasn't there and the coach said, it's okay, we're gonna play the game anyway. There'd be nobody on the other side. There'd be nobody to play against. You'd make every shot. It would get boring, right? So just remember, uh, kind of wink at those obstacles when they come up in September and, and think about your, your plans and know that uh, we go, we succeed not because we don't have doubts or fears or obstacles. We succeed because we keep going despite them. Sorry that I, I was so late getting on tonight. I'm glad I made it. Thanks, Lee, and back to you. And, Thanks, so oh, Mm. I also wanted to say I got my net, my Dow of network marketing in the mail yesterday, and I'm super excited about that too. It's an awesome book. There you go. Awesome. Thanks so much. And Paul, thank you so much for Marianne's words. Um, Jane put the link on YouTube in the chat. And in case you want to save the chat for the list of books or for the list of music, you just click on the chat and where it says two, there are three little dots to the side and you click those dots and, and uh, save the chat. It will save it for you to your computer. If you have any problems, just let me know and I'll be glad to forward that. And Mr. Beck, thank you all for being on. It's back to you, sir, to wrap us up. <laughs>